How you doing, dude? Hi, how are you? I'm good, good. Ready to go. First coaching session in a while, man, so it's going to be shitty. No, I'm kidding. How you, uh, so, what are you here for, man? So, basically, I'm uh, at 4K, and uh, I actually decided to go pro last year. So, I haven't gained a lot of MMR in the last year. That's the main reason I'm here for. Secondly, what I think is that I have uh, huge losing streaks whenever I gain uh, MMR. So, in okay. case if you can guide me through that, that will be very helpful. Okay. Um, so, I'll say 4K, trying to gain MMR, possibly go pro. So, basically... I'm going to tell you first and foremost that um, you shouldn't really think about it like going pro. Um, you should, like, it's one step at a time, right? So right now you're at 4K. If you make it to, like, upper echelon of 5K-ish, that's when you can really start considering, like, uh, you know, what, what, like, what, like, qualifier teams can I start playing on? You know, start trying to participate in open qualifiers, that kind of stuff. Um, right. And then move up from there. I think the biggest problem with your bracket, um, if you're talking about losing streaks, I mean, I still do it too. It's not, uh, Dota is not about fixing your mistakes 100%. It's about minimizing them as much as possible. And the biggest problem with your bracket is that you guys just tilt and get really frustrated because you know enough about Dota that when stuff goes wrong, you know what's happening. But, like, you, you know it's wrong. And it's really tilting you, but you're not good enough to know why it's going wrong. So um, that's honestly why your bracket tilts the most, uh, from my I own, see. from my own, um, you know, my own diagnosis of why your bracket tilts the most. So when it comes to like losing streaks and stuff, um, today I'm going to look at your gameplay, and we're going to talk about. Um, what I believe your biggest problems are. There's obviously going to be, you know, multiple problems, but I'm going to be doing my best to isolate the ones you should work on first and kind of give you the path to be right. better. And uh, the goal of fixing that loss, that lose rate shit, in my opinion, always for me is me being able to maintain focus on what I need to do to get better. Um, and when I'm tilted or frustrated, like take a reset, whether that's whatever that is for you, everyone's different. Take a reset, come back knowing work on whatever I'm about to talk to you about. So, um, sure. cause for me, like if I don't have something to focus on, then if I lose and have terrible games, that's all I can focus on is the fact that I just lost and had a terrible game. So, then that carries over into the next game and it just gets worse and worse. Um, I personally have noticed since I didn't stream for like a month and a half that streaming has gotten to me more when I'm playing pubs right now. Like I've let the fact that people are watching me have a bad lane frustrate me more. So like from my own perspective, I'm like, you know, having to make sure I stay more focused during my games. Just giving you an example for me. Um, but okay. So go ahead and link me your ID for the game in, in this chat that you want to, you want to watch. Yeah, I just want to. Yeah, shit, it looks like you need the coffee. Fucking a-holes, man. Okay, so, got our game. I'm gonna screen share with you. Uh... Can you see? Yeah. Cool. Usually I have to tell people to make sure the game's within a week, but if you're giving me a game on 7.19, that's I feel like you're wasting your money. So um what here are you here? So I'm I'm here. You're who? I'm here. So basically uh this is just uh, for the leaning stage, which I want to know. Uh, because uh, I I want to play position one or either position two, so I just wanted to know about the leaning stage for here in this game. So I don't mean to be rude because I'm a little tired and you have an accent to me at least. What hero? Uh, it's M K. Oh, Monkey King. M K. I'm like I'm yeah. like I'm hearing two letters. What two? <laughs> what two letters am I? Hearing? 
<laughs> okay, sorry. Okay, I'm waking up. I'm waking up. Um, so you just want the landing stage from this game? Yeah. Okay. Let's check it out. We'll 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 get past this game as uh you know swiftly as possible in terms of the landing stage. Okay. So let's see. You are going to be what lane here? Are you carry? Mid. Oh, you're mid. Okay. Do people just not pull tangos? Uh, no, they be back. Uh, okay. And that's fun. Wait, what? Okay. So first and foremost, every hero has strengths. These are kind of things you have to look out for. Uh, turn into a courier and scout. You have to be here at one minute. So anytime in any part of the game, it should be important to yourself that you know what you can always be doing. Bef like, okay, the way I explain it is... Um, like, when you get a BKB, you want to fight. So, by the time you get your BKB, you want to be able to fight. But up until that BKB, you can go hit creeps. But when you get the BKB, you need to think, I want to go fight here. So, you need to be on that part of the map when you're getting your BKB. But for the two minutes leading up to that, like, all you need to know is the next thing you need to do is get a BKB. My point is, this is a very simple version of that. Like, you need to be here at one minute. Turn into a courier and go scout until a minute, like or until the zero minute mark. Um, that's yeah, like, right. you know what I'm saying. So, um, the point that I'm gonna try to make to you, especially because you say that you're, you know, you're considering trying to go pro here, um, and everyone that's like really trying to take Dota that seriously, is you cannot mentally take five seconds off. You just can't like you. Uh, that's the nature of Dota, and I want people to understand so that. Did, Go ahead. Basically, I do that. Uh... What? I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. So what you're trying to say is uh, I basically try and do that in every game. It's just that this was a new patch and I was just looking at the map. Oh, so, <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. well that's like about the only reasonable excuse i'll ever come up with but in general like i've heard excuses so like love your yeah i've, I've, I've heard like excuses like i don't i usually do it i just didn't do it this game point is to do your best to do all these little things every game yeah, so what actually uh, what i do in the early game is that i go towards the top side uh in the lane in the mid lane itself and i try and scout from there whether uh on every hero Gotcha. Okay, so I'm gonna take you out of this game real quick. How often do you play mid? Like, is that your primary role? Yeah, it's my primary role, but I generally get to play only in four out of ten games. Okay, I got you. So we're gonna get out of this game real quick. Do you know how to mid lane block properly? Yeah, I can do that seventy five percent of the time. Okay, then never mind. I'm gonna go back to the game. Because you just, like, didn't even come close to doing it there. So, well, is that because you're on the new patch, trying to, wondering what the hell's going on? Is that why you missed the block yeah, entirely? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Then I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna fast forward. You, you do need to make sure that, like, when I'm in my coaching sessions, I will harp on that shit the most. So, I'll just fast forward to the lane, because that's what you're saying is happening. So, fast forwarding. Yeah. Okay. So, you have no opponent for the beginning? Because this was DC'd. Oh, it's morphing. What's happening here? Okay. Power spike wise, who's stronger right now? I I am okay. level level. So what should you be doing right now? Maybe trying to harass him. Yeah. So, this is what people do, okay? So, this is how mid laners work, especially. It works in every lane, right? But mid laners is the most important lane because you're 1v1. So, it's important to identify these cre- Okay, so I always talk about landing stage obligations. What's this Morphling's obligation right now? What's he have to do next? What's he going to do next? Uh, for the Morphling or for me? For him. What's, what's he going to do uh, next? He, has to, he needs to get CS. But which one? Uh, the one which is close to me right now. Which okay. Is 
So how long is it going to take him to get that creep? Uh, three hits. Three hits. So what if you just walk past this creep right now? What's his only choice? Because you're stronger, right? I've had the first the first important part of this message is you're stronger right now. And this is something that you and everyone else watching needs to understand. You need to ask yourself that question every five seconds in the landing stage. Like even less. Like eventually you ask yourself every second because it actually changes. Who is stronger and why? Is it cooldowns, levels, creep positioning, who's missing on the map, whatever, okay? So at all times in the landing stage, who's stronger? When you are stronger, you need to say, this is what his obligation is, and this is how I can fuck it up, like for him. Like, this is how I can make his job harder. So like right now, his ob- you're stronger because okay. you're level two, he's level one. His obligation is this creep. So what's the best thing you can do exactly to make his creep really hard to get right here. Either deny it or harass him. You're Monkey King. What is so it? I'll get, I'll get Jingu stacks up on him. Okay. So, my question is, should you walk at him and A-click him right here? Yes, yes. That's Why? Uh, just to build up the stacks so that I can uh, prep him for... Uh, okay. So, here's the deal, man. We're gonna tell we're gonna figure out like I want you to understand how exact everything is here. So is this creep getting hit by anything? Uh no. So if you run at him without drawing any aggro, what's happening over here? Because you know this is where he has to get, right? Over here? So what's happening yeah. over here if you walk at him and you don't change aggro at all? Uh he, the creep will eventually get denied by my creep. Which uh, creep? The enemy creep. No, this one's hitting uh, this one, right? Yeah. So if you walk at him without drawing any aggro and so zone then, him away, you're what, effectively denying how many creeps? Two creeps. Sorry. Two creeps. If this creep was hitting this creep, would you want to draw aggro? If this one's hitting this one, would you want to draw aggro? Why? Uh, yes, if it's not under deny range. No, if it's under deny yeah, the point is, if it's hitting this creep, you know his obligation is this creep, okay? So, yeah. if you draw aggro, you're extending how long this creep is alive. Yes. So, you want to draw aggro. But right now, his obligation is this, and this creep's hitting this guy. So, do you actually want to draw aggro? No. No! So, exactly what you should do is... Walk out of 500 range of this melee creep. You don't mind aggroing this one, right? You don't mind this one. We yeah. mind this one right here. So we want to walk out of 500 range. If you walk at this guy, what's he going to do to you? If you just walk at him right now, like literally walk to right here. He's going to run back. He's going to run back. And if he doesn't run back, he's an idiot, right? Like he's actually just going to take a bajillion damage. There's no way. So the point is movements in lane are so precise, okay? Like, people don't understand how much goes into, like, a mid laner at the highest level walking past creeps and choosing exactly when to draw aggro and stuff like that. So, like, I'm giving you a portrayal of I'm stronger, obligation, I know his creep's hitting this one, so I don't want to draw aggro because this one is also going to get low, so I want to walk past. I know I want to be aggressive. That's the first step. Like, I'd say the first step in this equation is I know I want to be aggressive, how am I going to go about that? Sometimes that literally means A, clicking the guy from right here, drawing all the creeps, and hitting him. Sometimes it means walking to a specific position to only draw aggro from two creeps, or one creep. Otherwise, it means walking past the creeps and drawing no aggro. Like, the point is you need to, like, it is understood by every pro player when they make these decisions, why, like, why they're doing it. Like, the point is knowing why you're doing it. So, like, I don't need you to be like, okay, BSJ told me I need to remember exactly what creeps to aggro. No, I'm telling you, know why you're being aggressive. So, if you know this is his obligation and you see this happening where this creep's killing this one, you know you don't want to draw aggro from this creep. Like, you just know that's something you don't want to do. So, you're just going to walk past it. Like, that's the point is, I'm trying to give you the reasoning that goes into it. But eventually, as long as you know the why, it really doesn't take that much thinking. You're just like, oh, okay. And you just do it naturally. But... For the time being, you're going to be really, I know this is a minute into the game, but I want people to realize like in yourself, like how much it goes into this whole idea. This is something I do where I always try to like, or I used to do, I always tried to just compete with the guy for the last hit. 
If I if that was Sumail, I would have if like you're Sumail and I'm the Morphling, I would have been hit five times before this creep gets killed. Like that's just how it happens. Like or I'm gonna be over here on Morphling and then this creep gets denied and there's no contest. The the point is you're so much stronger than him, you don't even have to give him a chance to go for that creep. That's the main focus that we're going for. So see how you're focused on creeps? Hit him! Hit him! Stop hitting creeps. Okay, so let's see. Right here. There you go. This is better. But of course, you got to deny. Okay. So you start the aggressive thing a little too late. What are you scared of? You're level 2, he's level 1. What are you scared of? Nothing. Okay. So why is he getting this creep for free, right? These are the type of things I'm going to keep asking you. Like, just think to your... Like, because I want you to realize in the end of the day, because I look at my mistakes like this too, how bad this is, right? Like, this is unacceptable. If you were this guy, you're just thanking... You know, you're thanking your lucky stars that you're just walking away from this. So, if we're going to rewind, you know, the two seconds that I want to rewind here, because every creep is a decision, by the way. That's why I'm treating it like this. Like, you need to have a decision made for every single creep that's dying in a lane. Um, okay, so, um, this is, this is, at this moment, you know his obligation, we're repeating this process, right? We know he's gonna go to this range creep. Mm, yes. Are you wanting to draw aggro when you go on him now? Yes, I am wanting to draw aggro because I'll delay the creep. Okay, so from what creeps do you want to draw aggro from? Uh... The range creep, maybe, because it does more damage. You want to draw aggro from both, right? You want to literally, like, it's below half now. You've recognized the point where it's below half. You walk at the guy. You make sure you don't A-click him from here. Because this a this range creep won't aggro you. You have to walk within range of the range creep and then aggro him, right? Because right. th that, that creep will start hitting you. The point is, if you start doing this to 4Ks, I guarantee you, what it's going to look like is you right here hitting the guy. He's going to be so focused on the CS that you're going to get Jingu stacks and kill him, like... That's actually what's going to happen because nobody in 4K does this shit, okay? Like, that's what's going to happen. So, like, I used to do this, and you can get to 5K, 6K not doing this, but then you'll have to learn this, and you'll be like, man, I really wish I'd learned this earlier. So, it's like, it's a pretty straightforward, like, meaning once you get it down, it just feels so simple. And when I say once you get it down, you'll still mess up, but you'll know why you're messing up, and you'll just, like, keep fixing it. Like, you'll keep getting better at it. So, this is another example of, oh. Well, you know, look at this. Uh, you know, you're just giving him that creep. Oh, he got a deny. What is this guy doing? How is he getting denies? Like, look, you know what I mean? Like, walk at him. None of this should be contested. So, like, um, the point that I'm trying to make is every hero has different ways of doing this. If you're Morphling, how does he generally secure CS? If you're a Morphling type hero. What does uh, he do? True. If uh, I'm a Morphling in this particular matchup or like, generally? In generally, like what are Morphling's strengths in lane? Uh, he can uh, morph through his uh, agility and strength so that he can get damage or get damage. Okay, but for getting creeps, what are his strengths in lane? Sorry. Uh, he has uh, high armor and high base damage. He has high armor and high base damage, so he wants to look to trade at any time, right? Yeah, and you, he'll usually be able to out CS you, so he's fine with just contesting you with hits and CSing. But can he trade with you in this matchup? Uh, no, no. So the only way he's ever gonna get CS or win the lane is if basically you and him are competing for CS, because Morphling's only two strengths are that he can trade well and that he can have high base damage for CSing. So, if he can't trade it better than you, then immediately one of his strengths is gone, right? Like, a, one of them is, in this matchup does not apply. In this matchup, the only one that now applies is that he can out-base damage you and has a better attack animation than you. So, the only thing you have to no do to take away his strength is prevent him from using his strength, right? So, like, you literally just don't let him hit creeps. Do you, you see what I'm saying? Like, do you see how I came to that yeah. conclusion? So, yeah. like... If you're against um if you're against Legion Commander, for instance, you know her strength in getting creeps is using overwhelming odds. 
So whenever you're looking to deny or looking to like like worrying about creeps, you don't want three of your creeps being low at the same time, right? Like you don't want that to happen because she'll just nuke you and get all three creeps, right? You want to make sure your creeps are dying one at a time. Like that's, you see how I'm thinking about this for every hero? I'm just giving you one example. So I know we've ton of, gone a ton into this landing stage, but so this is good. Just notice how more, much more often you could be doing it. Like, overall, like, I can tell you understand what you're supposed to be doing. You just need to do it more and better. And I want you to realize how often you could be doing it. So, does that haste room change the lane? If he gets it, are you just going to lose or something? Uh, no, not if he gets Yeah. If so, he gets it, I'm not going to lose. Yeah, you're, you're, you're obviously not wanting him to get the haste room. But my point is, you know... You are in control. Stop giving up free shit, right? There's a free range creep right here. Get these two creeps. Like, don't go out of your way to get a haste rune. The times where you miss two or three creeps to get a haste rune is when you're an ember with a bottle and you're at half health, half mana, and you have no bottle charges. Then you can go get that haste rune, okay? Like, you have full health, pretty much, full mana, no bottle or anything, and there's three creeps dying right now. So just like I asked you what his obligations are, ask yourself what yours are. And in the laning stage, there's nothing more important on any hero than hitting damn creeps. And the only time you differ from that strategy, like of hitting creeps, is if there's something going on that's preventing or going to change who's hitting creeps. So my yeah. question, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, well, uh, you pause right now over here and I immediately recognize that I moved up. That you what? I immediately recognized when you paused that I shouldn't have gone for that. Yes. And so my point that I'm trying to make to you is the mindset that you know beforehand to not do this because you know your obligation is to get creeps. If you saw a DD there and he started running for it, should you start running for it too? Uh, I guess yes. Yeah, because a DD is going to change who's winning, like who's in charge of the lane, right? Haste room doesn't do anything in this lane. But if you were... You know, Ember Spirit against a Monkey King. A haste rune for that enemy Monkey King would be a big deal. Like, right? Like, you don't want him having a haste rune. So, like, my point is, you look, you do this little movement, you see the haste rune, right? You're going to see it right about here. The minute you see it, you should just be like, eh, and then come back to killing creeps, right? Like, like that's my point that I'm trying to make. That's the level of decision making that is required. Look, at he gets a deny, you miss a creep. Feel free when you go for that haste rune, even if you're going to go for it. What should you do right here if you're going to get that haste rune? A spam stun. No, you A-click this guy and drag these creeps with you as you go. I see. Why would you not have one objective and another objective be brought together? You'll see other heroes do that, okay? So, like, times where you look at that rune, see it's a DD. You can A-click him, draw these creeps to here. And if he starts running that way, you're now right here hitting your creeps instead of right here hitting your creeps, and you'll get the rune first. You see what I'm saying here? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Moving on. Uh. Okay. Okay. So this is a spot where... I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to have to watch this replay back or watch my coaching session back because each one of these individual points I'm giving you should be tried to work on one at a time. OK, because like right. I'm, I'm cramming this landing session into so many little things. So the most important thing is you remember the questions I'm asking you to ask yourself. So like, am I stronger? What do I do with that? What's his obligation? Those are like examples of what I've done so far. So in this case. I, I will never forget this lesson from 747 I got while I was on VGJ. I asked him, how do I know whether or not to harass or CS? Like, whether or not I go for the deny or go for the harass or whatever. Do How do I know when to draw aggro and all that kind of stuff? And he said, just figure it out, man. I was like, oh. <laughs> that was his answer. And, like, I know that sounds so stupid to, like, quote that. But, like, that spoke to me saying it literally is different for every single fucking creep. Like, it is actually single. Every creep is different. So, I see. right here, 
The reason why I have a problem with that aggro is because you're making the obligation he has alive for longer, okay? And that may seem good as we talked about last time, but this time around, if you just stood here and then backed off to kill this creep, you could have killed it. Because you zoned I him see. away from it already. Like, like, watch this. You could hit this creep. Walk at him like this. And then turn around and deny this twice. Could you have not? Right, right. So, this is like, every example is different, right? So, like, in this case, it's not actually worth hitting him once. Because what happens is, okay. This is, I will quote, tell you exactly what Sumail would do to me here. He would walk back to this creep posturing to hit it if morphling comes back up he hits him and while this creeps at like two hits right if he doesn't walk up he hits it twice and denies it like that's exactly decision making level that i've been shit on by sumail for instance on multiple occasions and you may be like bsj if you know what he would do why don't you do it it's much easier to tell you what you should be doing exactly in hindsight than it is to do it exactly every time right so like this example you know this is obligation, you know it's dying, you walk at him, he's zoned, you walk back towards the creep. If he walks up, you hit him. If he wa doesn't walk up, you hit it twice and get the deny. Like, that's a thought process that would go through every single creep type thing. Okay, so, so notice how that aggro actually looks bad. Yeah. Okay, so, every decision to aggro is incredibly important. Okay, so you got your Jingu. Do you know how tower aggro works with the whole 500 thing? So. Yes. Okay, so in this case, you're doing the right idea. And I would even beg to differ, you should be walking into the 500-700 range where the tower won't aggro you, and then A-clicking him. Because why... Okay, what is the important factor that allows you to do that? Does uh, he have any counterplay be... on you? Uh, he should have uh, wave form skilled up. Yeah, he has to. Just Most good Morphlings will not have this skilled up. They'll have Adaptive Strike. Yeah. So, what if he does have Adaptive Strike and you just kill him? What if he has to waveform simply because you walk at him? Is that a good deal? Is that a good deal too? Yeah, that is a good deal. Yeah. Do you really care about getting these denies over the fact that you could literally run him into his own tier 2? No. No, right? So, like, just think about it that way. And... You can do, as long as you're out of the 500 range, you can A hit, you can A click him. So the point is you don't A click him right here, right? You walk to the 500 range and A click him. He can't walk up to you. Like if he actually walks into you, like even if he's under tower, he, like, he's just going to die. Like he's actually going to die or not die, but like it's not going to be good for him. There's no way that trade is good for him unless you just tank 10 tower shots. Like there's no way that that's good for him. The point is every time I've asked you, about when it's good to be aggressive. The important similarity in all these cases is the other guy has no counterplay. Like, he can't do anything about it. Like, if you just walk past creeps, if you just aggro creeps, like, there's nothing he can do to counterplay you. And in all those circumstances, it's super important that you begin to recognize when they're occurring. Because, like, yeah, right here, you're literally recognizing he can't do shit about that. Like, he actually can't do anything. Okay, so... Let me see here. Another case that, that illusion room just doesn't matter. Well, who cares? Who cares? Moving back. So I'm not harping on any of this right now because it's just the same stuff. Like, you're just not being aggressive enough again. And this matchup's going to get yeah. slightly worse as it goes on, I'd say. I'd say, like, it doesn't get bad for you, but, like, I'd say so Morphling is, like... Actually, uh, in this game, what exactly happened is I did somewhat good in the lane in 10 minutes. And then uh, eventually we lost the entire game just because there were multiple things. So if you could look into the entire game into this, uh, then there's a second game which I had for the okay. next stage. So you just want to move on from this lane? Like, move on from this yeah. game entirely? Okay, cool. Then pull up the uh, next game. We can, uh, we can move actually to the 10 to 15 minute stage. Okay, oh, you just want to move to later in this yeah. game. Okay, sorry. I thought you were saying yeah. it was a different game. I'll just fast forward. 
So you have phase double wraith man. Are you going first item basher? Nah. So I'll just I'll just watch and see how it plays out. So let me look at this game right now. So you guys are up by 4k. Let's look at CS here. Let's look at levels. You're you guys are winning on four cores. They have a jungle meepo. Obviously, that's relevant. But so the way I look at this is they had a jungle meepo. Um, I guess you maybe had a jungle legion. I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, yeah, Legion was jungle. Okay, so the point is that's insane. I guess jungling's back. So, I guess um, what the emphasis I want to make to you real quick is at this stage in the game, if you are far enough ahead of Morphling, for all the reasons I've already stated, you could be like shutting him down and shutting the Meepo down, like at nine minutes into the game, eight minutes into the game, like equivalently, like you know, Ember's supposed to beat Alchemist, but if you're Sumail against Alchemist. And you shit on Alchemist so hard that at the eight minute mark, you're drawing four heroes to your lane. That's way more impactful than just shitting on one guy, right? Like that's way more impactful. And that is, in my opinion, this current meta, the only reliable way to solo carry games. Like the only reliable way to solo carry games is to pick a lane dominator and dominate the lane so hard that you are creating space for your entire team. Like, that is the only way, in my opinion, to reliably solo carry. So, generally, uh, generally what happens is I get, uh, once that something that sort of happens, I get uh, trial end or dual end. And then, suddenly, I am the one who's getting shut down. So, what exactly should I do in that particular I would game? need to see a specific game. Because, usually, okay. if you are that powerful, like, if you won your lane and they try lane you, you can just go shit on someone else. And then they follow you there, and then you go back, and then they follow you there, and then you're just drawing three heroes with you wherever you go. And if you're losing games, then your teammates just decided to feed down lanes over and over again. You may say, my teammates are bad, BSJ. But if you're doing that, you'll win 80% of games. Like, you'll actually just win 80% of games. Because, just, yeah, the other so, 20, your team will be so bad they throw. Generally, but, generally, I go back to the lanes. So that's not a good move. Yeah, if you're a strong hero, like, if you're a really strong hero, and there's three heroes sitting in your lane, and you're just, like, doing nothing... You should obviously go somewhere else. Like, I, I know that sounds like I'm not trying to be insulting. Like, if you are a really strong hero and they're bringing three heroes to shut you down, can they have three heroes in all three lanes? No. So just go to a lane yeah. without three heroes in it and go shit on that guy. And then they'll follow you there. And then go back to mid and shit on that guy again. And then they'll follow you there and then go shit on the other guy. Like, they can't follow you with three heroes and get away with it. Like, they can't just follow you. Like, there's no way. Like, think about it from their perspective. Like, if they just run around the map chasing you with three heroes, like, that's not, like, you have to win the game if they're going to do that. Obviously, if you're doing that and your other four heroes are losing 4v2, that's life, okay? Like, that's, that's life. Sometimes it'll happen, okay? But, like, I'm saying you'll win most of your games if you play this way. So we're going to fast forward. Uh, so... Scene of going Echo Saber. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Backwash. Ah, fresh mate. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under Radiant's attack. Radiant's top tower is under Radiant's attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Radiance Radiance bottom tower is under okay. attack. Radiance middle tower. I was gonna say you definitely should go bottom here, but you get there, so it's a little like my point I guess what I would look at here in terms of decision making. I can rewind if you want. So, like right here, this is the type of thought process that has to go through. 
I want to be clear to you guys that once you get good at this, like once you get good at this thought process, it isn't this complicated in your own head. It becomes pretty simple. But for the time being, since you're not used to thinking like this, when you're working on one thing at a time, it is going to be very mentally straining to think like this, okay? Because it's just like running a mile. Like the first time you run a mile, it feels real fucking difficult. But like after you've done it 20 times, you're not going to worry. Like it doesn't feel that difficult to run a mile. It's the same thing. Like, so my point is right now, so I'm giving you an example of something similar. The idea of like three heroes or multiple heroes showing up in your lane. Okay. This is the thought process I want to give you. So right now you have two heroes in your lane. Are you going to walk up to this lane and just like hit creeps or go on them or anything like that? No. Okay. So this is your thought process. You're like, eh, I can't really hit these guys. I don't want to be here. This is this lane's like, you know, for lack of a better word, it's dead to me right now. So it's not the dead lane. It's just dead to me right now. So yeah, immediately I think to, I have to think to myself, I don't want to be here. So where can I be? So if you were a storm spirit, for instance, where would that probably be? Uh, for like, like, like if no, you saw you this and you're a storm, where would you probably go? Uh, to the jungle. Yeah, you'd probably just go hit this medium camp like right next to you, right? But as a monkey yeah. king, that's usually not ideal to like go hit some creeps while they do this, right? So my point is, as a monkey king, you now you're an active hero, right? You're a hero that wants to go do stuff. So if you look at this, you have to ask yourself immediately, what active thing can I do? If you're an alchemist or a storm, like a farm type hero, the minute you see this, you go where can I farm, like, near this lane, right? Like, where can I farm? But as Monkey King, you say, okay, where can I go? So immediately you see Invis Rune bottom, which is fine. You see the Invis Rune, you're going to go get it. That that was correct. The next step is you have to look at the map and say, where can I go that's impactful? So immediately I would say bottom lane. So my question is, if you were to just TP bottom lane right now, Use. would that do anything? Like, what do you need bottom lane in order for it to be effective against this guy? I need backup. You need backup, right? Because if it was like a normal hero, meaning like one that has to TP out, you could actually just yeah. TP in front of their face, right? Because they can't you, they can't get away from your stun or whatever. Like, you can just chase them yeah. down. But you need a stun. So you're going to come to, like, you. what I mean by, like, look in the other lanes, you see this guy. If you didn't see anybody, then keep running to this Invis rune thinking the same thing. And the minute you see somebody make this decision but now you already see this guy so you're no you know you're gonna go pick up this invis and you know you shouldn't just tp here you need a stun so look at the stun right you have the stun hero right here so your goal yeah. needs to be that i get to this lane when the hero that is a stun is there so remember what i said was what do you need in order to make it good for you to go here and you said a stun that is a question you need to ask yourself every game what if you're the stunning hero what might be something you need to go there uh damage yeah some damage right like so look at your teammates and think what hero gives me damage so like if that guy's not there or if i say hey dude go like go bottom help me out and he doesn't go then you don't go <laughs> right like that's that's the point so you should think to yourself i need a stun so you should be in this lane the second this legion gets there so you notice how you get the invis and your legion's running like this you should follow her. Or, at worst case, because of how long it took you, you should just, like, TP out of vision right here. Or, like, out right here. Because you see this happening, right? If you were to TP right here, right now, and instantly stun this guy, like, meaning, like, if he were to queue up a poof and you just stun him, there's no way out for him. Like, he's actually just dead from this moment on. Right? Like, if yeah. you were to TP and stun him right here, if you were to have walked with the Legion, jump on this tree and stun him, like... He's going to die, right? Like, th that's the point I'm trying to make here. And so, you end up going to the right place. But, to be frank, if you understood exactly why and how you were supposed to go there, you would have been there with the Legion and killed that guy and had your Legion not die. Like, you, you, you see the slightly difference there? Like, you got there, and it's like, you understood you had to do something. Now, I want you to dissect the situation in all, in all circumstances. So, that's like an example of... Two heroes showed up in my lane. What do I do? Um, you had Jingu stacks there? Okay. Aren't you, like, strong as fuck? You have Jingu stacks? 
right? Yeah. You're strong as fuck. You have Jingo stacks. What's going on right yeah. now? What well, in terms of analyze the entire hero situation, objective situation on the map. Tell me everything. Everything you can think of right now. Because this is what you should do after you get a kill, by the way. Like, you should think to yourself, what's going on in the game right now? So, so right now I can see two heroes top. Okay. And the mini -map. they have two heroes dead, right? Yeah. So you see, you account for pretty much every hero they have. And yeah. you are super strong. So do you want to confront heroes or do you want to just, like, avoid them? Yeah, I should have TP top. Yes, immediately, right? The point is, like, yeah. I, I get this kill and I think... Okay, this lane's getting farmed. Necro's here. He's chilling. He can pick up these bounty runes. Like, if I go here, and their third hero is bottom picking up bounty runes, what's going to happen to these guys? Uh, I'll kill them. They're, yeah, they're just going to get shit on, right? So, if like, I see Zeus. I see Morphling. I don't care if Ricky's top, because I have Jingu. I just have to, like, play it smart. And... I don't care if he's bottom, because if he's bottom, I kill these guys. So, whatever. Like, both scenarios are fine. Either way, I plant myself right in front of these guys. This whole decision-making process, after you get that kill, should take, like, two seconds. Like, three seconds, maybe? Like, somewhere around there? Like, it should be very quick. You get that kill, and you immediately ask yourself, what's going on in this game? What do I want to do? Did I get that kill in order to farm more? Did I get that kill in order to kill some more people? Like, you know, what is my hero doing in the game? It's like, if you're just a slark or something, and you used your ultimate... And you got that kill. You, you should is? use the 80 seconds between now and your next ultimate to just go kill some creeps. So if you were a Slark right here, I would have TP'd mid and immediately pushed this out. Because that's the most impactful thing you can do as a hero that doesn't want to fight at the runes and doesn't offer anything. You can go push a lane because you know there's two heroes here. You know there's two heroes dead. And you want to do the most efficient thing right now. And often a 4k player Slark, he would just go hit this creep camp right here. Like, yeah. that's the difference, right? Like, I'm just giving you an example of of uh, the thought process that should go through. So, all these things need to be really quick, right? Like, look at what's happening top as a result of you not going there. Whenever strong, whenever you're getting dove, um, okay, we're assume we're like ruling out the games where you're down by like ten thousand gold. Okay, whenever you're getting dove, it's, it's like at this point in the game, it's somebody on your team doing what you're doing. Like, if you're this techie who's getting chased by a morphling at your own shrine, it's because somebody on your team is not exerting strength that they have. Like, that's all what it always is. So, like, when you're getting dove by four heroes mid and nothing else is happening on the map, yeah, maybe you could have had better positioning, but I guarantee if you look at one of your teammates, they weren't being aggressive enough, and that led to you getting dove. Like, that's how Dota works. If you're not pressuring, the other team's pressuring. And the lower MMR you go, eventually someone's going to do it. Meaning, like, maybe not ever, maybe a lot of opportunities to pressure were missed, but somebody's going to do it eventually. Like, in your lane, I would say you were the only one with the potential to pressure that Morphling. Like, he can't pressure you. So even though you missed, like, 20 opportunities to pressure him, you still were the one pressuring overall because you were um, the most powerful one in lane by far. The difference is that level of execution from you would not work if it was a much closer matchup. Like if it was a matchup where you didn't get a free first creep wave, if um, it was like a different hero matchup. So, okay, so you go mid. Uh, get the tower, it's fine. Meepo's back alive, so you want to join up with your team, I'd say. Necro didn't think the same thing. Okay, this type of TP is really bad. Okay. So, for lack of memes, this is the dead lane area, okay? So, like, if you TP to bottom, what's your only play now? Uh, to run back in case someone comes in. To either run back mid or to call for a kill on bottom, right? Because that Meepo hero yeah. kills. Like, if, if it's like Meepo plus one, you're going to die. So by you TPing yeah. bottom, are you? What's your positioning on the map? It means that you can. Okay, it's let's just say a good player on the other team saw you TP uh, bottom. Okay. Uh, before that, actually, uh, I've uh, seen seen that uh, deadline concept, and I've been following that in the previous patch. 
so this game actually i was confused where exactly to farm uh, so how is the dead lane applicable in the new patch is it the same manner like as as of now, it, it, I, the the safe lane's the same as it was before. Like it's the same. Like it's even shittier than it was before because if you want to farm here, you're on low ground. Like it's even shittier. Yeah. Right. Because you're on low ground, so it's even dangerous, more dangerous to be here than it was previously. So like, yeah, it hasn't changed at all. Like I assure you guys that there's some drastic update in like how this dynamic changes. I'll tell you, it's not. Um, I don't want to say it's not rocket science. Like the concept has existed for a very long time for a very good reason. Like the way the map of Dota is oriented, it's just very dangerous almost always to be in your own safe lane. Like it just that's how it looks. So like my point that I will make is you better have a very fucking specific reason to TP to your own side of the map. Like a, in every game. Like there are times where it's okay, but that reason has to be real fucking good okay like you <laughs> you have to have a real good one okay like i'll still make this mistake sometimes too like the point is like teeping to your safe lane i need you and everyone else to understand it is a huge decision to make like and this is not a good enough reason to do it you're just removing yourself from the from half of the map and you makes your moves predictable guess what like now look at there's a fight top like you see, you see, like, it's not a coincidence that a fight top now happens and you're not at it. It's just not a coincidence, okay? It, it, it's, that's why you don't make that TP. Um, yeah. It just happens too much. If you had stayed mid or... Okay, what if you had just walked bottom here? Because that's... If you want to go bottom, you should almost always walk. So you I walk... Just... So you walk bot. Where is, where is this TP here? You TP'd... So you're right here. You've decided you don't want to go with your team. But yeah. let's be honest. If a fight happens, where is it going to happen? Uh, since my team is uh, pushing that tower, it's going to happen top. Okay. If, the, if they respond. What? Uh, if the enemy team responds, it's going to happen top. Yes. So the point is, if a fight's going to happen, it's going to happen top. So the last thing you should ever do is TP away from that as a monkey king okay so like you know certain heroes you're never going to show up to that fight but monkey king you're definitely a hero that wants to show up to fights potentially you don't want to just sit there behind them waiting for a fight to happen but you want to show up to fights if they happen so the last thing you should ever do is tp away from top like that's that's a big deal so you this in this certain instance your decision is i know the fight's going to happen top do i actually want to sit top behind my team M why might you choose to sit behind top Rather than going mid, for instance. What do you see now that makes that... Oh, I just realized I have a mini-map cover for my viewers on. Uh, what What do you see on the map right now that makes it so you don't need to sit behind your team? Uh, everyone is missing. No. Uh, only, only Meepo is visible. Yeah, they have Morphling mid, Meepo bottom. Your team's yeah. not threatened. You don't have to sit behind them right now. So, oh, I thought, what? Uh, okay, okay, I understood. You, you see what I'm saying now? Yeah. Like, if Meepo and Morphling were missing, these waves weren't being pushed at all, what should your, should your decision be right now? Uh, to sit behind. Yeah, if or say, missing. guys, back up, I don't want to fight. But in this case, I'd say it's okay for you to fight. So your, your decision at that point is, there's going to be a fight top, guys, are we doing it, right? But right now, you know that, like, if there's a fight top, it's not going to happen immediately, right? Because Morphling's mid and Meepo's bottom and Ricky's dead for 20. So at that point, you say, okay, so I know if there's a fight top, I want to go. But it's not happening. Like, this fight's not happening for at least 10, 15 seconds. So where should you go? Uh, to the jungle. Or, I mean, potentially... Like to the mid lane. Yeah, or to the mid lane, right? And every game that's gonna be a bit different. But like if your mid lane's getting pushed into, so what should your player perspective be right now? You should know it's either jungle or mid lane. So you look at this and you say, Oh, I'm not gonna do anything there. Like it's not pushing into my tower. So I'll just hit this camp or I'll go hit this camp. You know what I mean? Like your immediate perspective should be I'm gonna go mid or jungle. So then your your camera should shift to here. You see that it's not pushing. 
If you saw this creep wave looking the opposite, meaning like these are his creeps and this is yours, you would immediately go mid, right? Like, do you see what I'm saying? Am I, are you following my train of thought here or? Yes. Okay, cool. So the point is, you know where the fight's going to break out. Don't TP away from it. And so I'm looking at how, what needs to, in a, what, what does your team need to be enabled to fight top? Like, what could be going on on the map which would prevent your team from grouping up top? Uh, split push. Yeah, split push, right? So if your team is top and they want to group up and you don't necessarily want to just be sitting with them, this is how Dota works right now. It's almost always four and one at like this stage in the game. It's almost always four and one. So somebody has to be that one. So in this case, your team, like I would say you are the one, meaning, you know, the one that goes alone, you know, not, not like the matrix. Yeah. So <laughs> you like, you need to like what the whole idea from, okay. I'm going to give you a relatively advanced concept. Obviously, your teammates can't execute this. So, meaning, like, if you saw your Monkey King, if you're, like, one of the other guys, and you saw your Monkey King TP here, they should immediately know to not be top. Like, they should immediately know we can't be three or four heroes top anymore because the whole rule that I've been on talking to better players than myself is at this stage in the game and later, you need to be able to have five heroes at a fight at any time. Like, at any point in the game, you need to have, be able to have five heroes. Like, not have five heroes sitting together, but you need to be... If a fight does occur, all five heroes need to be able to get there. Okay? So, like... Yeah. Um, in this case, if you had TP bottom and they want to fight top, the other team, can all five heroes from their team get to here? Yeah. Can all five of yours? No. That's why you lose the fight. It's actually, like that simple like it really is like obviously there's more in that goes into it than just that but like that's why so, your tp uh, is so important go ahead you have something to say all right yeah suppose if i reverse oh, I uh, the tp right now and someone else from my team tp is bought and i am there top alone uh so and they're taking a fight bot so what should i do then then uh, like should I follow the team or should I... Remember what? Us when you okay, so are you alone top or do you have your team top and one of your guys TP bottom? One of the... I have reversed myself. Someone else has gone bot and I'm with the team. Okay. So at that point, you should literally say... Okay, so why are they there in the first place? What does putting three heroes top accomplish? Uh, nothing as such, but in this particular case, uh, like... There were three heroes top. They went uh, and pushed the lane regardless. And somehow I was, if in case I was with them, should I have taken that fight or should I have just... I think you should up, take that uh, fight for sure. Zeus is dead. Yeah, like this is a good fight. Like the point that I'm trying to make here. Okay, the reason why I'm asking you is like what does putting three heroes in a lane generally do? Um, Just when you have to push the lane, you put... Yeah, you're like creating lane. pressure somewhere. So, if you're creating pressure, there's always two choices. One, you want to fight them. Two, you don't want to fight them. Right. So, if you're the guy creating pressure, you always should know when you're creating pressure whether or not you intend to fight them, okay? So, that's based on what hero you are. That's based on who's missing. That's based on who on your team's with you. Like, BSJ there's a bunch of factors that go into that decision, but the decision itself is, am I pressuring or, or sorry, am I looking to fight with this pressure or am I just looking to force them there? And generally, the team that's stronger will be the team that's looking to fight. Or the team with better team fight, I think is probably the better, like, whoever's stronger at that given moment in the game. There can be a team that's ahead by 3k or ahead by 5k that should never fight because the enemy team has five team fight heroes or some shit. You know, you should just never fight them head on, like that kind of thing. And you should know, looking at their lineup, whether or not that's that's the case. Like, in this game, if you were top as three, and Zeus is dead, and your Necro could just walk to you guys right here, I wouldn't mind a fight happening right here, even if your Techies TP bottom, or... But it depends on what hero TP's bottom. If your Techies TP bottom, I wouldn't give a shit. If your Huskar TP bottom, that might be a bit, bit different. Because you can fight four, maybe, without a Techies, but can you fight four with a Techies? I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. You know what I mean? But, like, that's every game situation. Yeah. The point that I'm trying to tell you is 
I can't oversimplify it farther than that. It's literally, are we wanting to fight them and why? Yeah, I understood. So if you don't want to fight them, that's when you push the creep wave by whatever means necessary, meaning either you can just right-click it down if you feel safe enough, you can stun it and jump into the trees, you can stun it and go kill some jungle camps, like whatever's, you know, degree of safety you feel, you know, like I don't know what the situation is. But in that case, right. if you're looking to fight, you should be, you know, doing whatever it takes as a monkey king to push, which is usually like sitting in these, tr uh, sorry, like sitting in these trees as you're trying to push, you know, um, like every hero approaches pushes differently. Monkey King is usually not the hero hitting the tower. He's the hero up in the trees helping somebody else hit the tower by providing them information and stuff. Um, right. So, like, you'd be up in these trees. But if you're not looking to push, then you shouldn't be in those trees. And if you're not looking to push and your Huskar walks into the tower to push, you should be like, I don't want to do this. Like, let's back up. And if he doesn't back up, what's the perfect thing you should do there? Uh, if I am with them or... Yeah, if you're I'm, with them, you I'm, don't want to fight and he doesn't back up even though you told him to. Should you stay and feed with I him? Back off. Yeah, you just back off and no, let him no. die. Okay, like that's the perfect yeah. play. It, I even let that get the best of me sometimes where I'm like, we shouldn't be pushing this tower, but the guy that hits buildings is hitting it, so I'll stay. And then I just feed. Like, it, it, if you don't think you should be there and he just ignores you and keeps hitting the tower, then let him just die. Um, you know, so that kind of thing. Like, I'm just giving you perfect scenario. So they TP. The point that all came from this is you TP bottom, and I I will emphasize again. I'd say the most game losing play that when you hear um in our bracket, you'll hear some rank forty guy, like some well known guy, flame a rank seven hundred player, and it'll be the rank seven hundred player, the rank forty guy saying we took a fight. Where were you? And the rank seven hundred player will say I didn't have a TP. I guarantee they did exactly what you did here. Where they, yeah, they didn't have a TP, but that's because they TP'd terribly. So the minute you see that fight, you should immediately push mid, which you do. And you just feed here? Yeah. Yeah. That's about worst case scenario. That That's a summary of like nine bad decisions. So you just rage buy a gem, I guess? I don't think that's a good gem purchase. Is that a rage gym buy? No, no, no. There's no sentries from the entire like for the entire game there weren't any sentries, so that's why I directly bought her. I mean, then buy some dust, man. Like, if you lose this gym, you just like throw the fucking game. <laughs> like you actually just lose if you lose this gym. Because they have a Ricky, so at some point you'll need a gym, and you have a techie, so if they get the gym, like you, like you know, like you can't just buy this gym. Like the only time you buy a gym is when you absolutely need one and you're like almost unkillable. Like if you have like a BKB here, I'd say, okay, fine, buy a gym. But this is definitely a way overreaction to your teammates not doing their job. So the best decisions I love to watch from 4K players is when they respawn. So we're going to understand what's going on on the map right now because this is something you need to do every single time you respawn. So what is happening right now? This is your player perspective. What is happening on the map right now? As much as you can fathom for me. I don't think you see brown. You don't see that There's, pudge. It's just a mini map thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can only see the Meepo right now, I guess. I think you can see their... And, oh, yeah, yeah. Ricky's invis. And... Yeah, so you can't see Ricky. So, you see Meepo. Yeah. Does yeah, Meepo so represent just, split push threat? Yes. Okay. So Meepo is representing threat on bottom. That's the first step. Go ahead. Continue. Uh, then three of my teammates are at mid. Okay. And no one is spot to respond to that split. Okay. So if a fight happens, where is it going to be? I'm not sure where exactly. Well, what are your teammates doing? They're mid. So it's going to be mid, right? Like if something happens, it's going to be but, mid. They're not just going to suddenly yeah, be I'm, three heroes somewhere else, right? So if yeah, you but want... Back, backing. What? Uh, since they're backing out, should I still consider that the fight is going to happen mid? Okay, the point is, if you were to TP top or bottom right now, at this given moment where you are respawning, why is that bad? Uh, because my team is mid and most probably, just like you said right now, there's going to be a fight. 
Yeah, There's right. There's going to be a fight happening. So, do you want to TP mid and join these guys? Yeah. Why? What's going on here? You literally said nothing's happening here, didn't you? No, only only if a fight happens. Yeah. So, do you want to TP top or bottom? Why? Uh, just to counteract the pressure Mipo is putting through split. But if you TP top or bottom and a fight goes on mid, what happens? I'm not there in the fight. You're useless. If you TP yeah. mid, what happens right now? Then again, I have just joined my teammates and Mipo is going to split push. Okay, so I where should you TP point. right now? I should wait. You should literally walk oh. somewhere. <laughs> just walk somewhere. I, I will tell you right now. Yeah. The concept of walking to a lane when people respawn just doesn't dawn on people. Like, I actually, like, it, it's one of those where I did it too. Like, don't, I'm not putting myself above you guys. I did this too. But now that I understand it, it's like one of the most annoying things to watch. Like, I'm not mad at you, obviously. It's just, it's like obviously a frustrating thing to witness. I'm like, just don't TP. Like, just don't do it. So, like, I will tell you, you, whenever you TP out of base, you need to have a specific reason for why you're TPing. Like, you actually need to think like, like this. Where would the fight be if I do TP? Do I want to be at the fight right now? If I don't want to be at the fight, do I need to be able to be at the fight? Meaning, like, I still have to have a TP available. So, in this case, it's literally, if a fight happens, it would be right here. There's a split push threat going on bottom. So I don't want to just TP to this fight immediately. Like, I don't want to just TP and hope a fight goes on. Because if I TP here and no fight goes on, I'm just going to lose a tier two. So then I don't want to yeah. TP here or here because if I TP here or here and the fight goes on, my team just feeds because I'm not there. So in this case, I need to just walk. And so then you ask yourself, do I walk top? Do I want to look for gank pressure with a techies with no mana? No. Okay. So am I going top? No. no. So where do, what do you do? You walk bottom, right? Like you, that is yeah. how we came to this conclusion that we are walking bottom. So that's, that's what we're doing. So if we walk bottom and we see Meepo here, maybe call for a TP from somebody. Okay. I look at Legion, no TP. I look at Huskar, no TP. I look at Necro, no TP. Okay. So if you go bottom, it's simply to deep push. It's not to kill them, right? Like it's just to, just to throw a little stun in there to kill some creeps. Yeah. But now, since you TP'd, exactly what I said would happen happens where just nothing. But you have a gym, so... I don't think that gym should even exist, but that's fine. It worked out. The point is, I don't think that should have done that way. But I just want you to understand the decision-making I was telling you to make. So, you get a kill. You see a DD, you have one Jingu stack left. You see Ricky top, you have a gem, let's get him. Looks like you're on the same page. I would have thought the same thing, to be honest with you. And it didn't work out. I actually don't hate that decision. You just have a Necro that's bottom. I honestly don't hate that decision. But that decision is real bad now that you have a gem. <laughs> uh, we yeah. lost the gem, right? Uh, yeah, that's, that's a rough one. So, the game at this point becomes real awkward, because they have... I'm going to tell you right now. Um, I've gone... It's about an hour. I want to give you one more laning stage or some other game to practice real quick. This game is like, because they have a Meepo that has like ridiculous kill met threat on the map, this game is like really fucking hard. So I don't want to worry about this game. Like, let's do like 10 minutes right. on one other game and then move on, and then we'll be done. So, um, go ahead and uh, link me another game. We'll do a quick summary of anything else i can see or any repetitive mistakes and we'll call it a day all right uh, just give me a moment yeah no problem dude So while like I'm loading this game, I I just want to remind you. So leaving this leaving this session, that like uh, all of these things are like more than the example I'm giving you. Right? I'm trying to give you yeah. the concept. Like, what do you do after a kill? What do you do every time you're thinking about a decision in lane? You know, what do you do when you're respawning? Um, and they're all a process. You're still gonna mess up. Like the goal that I want you to do, because it's how it works for me every time, is 
The first step is to know it's important to think about it. The second step is to catch yourself messing up afterward, meaning like, oh, afterward, I ah, I TP'd bottom and a fight broke out top. Shit, I shouldn't have TP'd bottom. And then the second time, like the third step is literally realizing it while you're doing it. And then like, but you've already done it. And then the fourth step is not fucking doing it anymore. Like that, that's, that's how, that's how it works. Um, but you will still mess up is like my main emphasis. Who are you in this game? Troll. Troll. Okay. Missing top. Missing middle. So, you are most likely against Earthshaker Ricky. Earthshaker Wind Ranger. Okay. That's fine too. I'd say you should always level your throwing axes. So, um... What is Troll's strength in level 1? Like, you have to think about what's most important, right? Creeps. So, if you think about what Bash does for you, it gives you 6 armor, and it gives you, um, like, you know, bonus attack speed, technically. Because you have the base attack. Yeah. Does that help you secure creeps, any of that? Um, actually, my thought process was that I was going to take too much damage in this lane, so I'll... Uh, Get that. Fun. That's like um, Enigma. Oh, you're going to take a lot of damage in this lane? Is what you're thinking? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm going to take a lot of damage on level one itself. So that's really okay, so that's like an Enigma saying, I'm going to level my Q because I, if we're going to contest this rune, I'm going to take a lot of damage. I want you to realize, like, that's how bad this is. Like, it may be not quite that bad, but like a lesser version of that. Okay, so you need to have this. Why? Because this secures range creeps. And this secures any creep that they're contesting. If you combine this with your auto attack because of the way your projectiles work, your auto attacks effectively are 128 damage whenever you have this up. And it's a 9 second cooldown. Okay? And anytime you do Crazy. it, it's also going to be hitting somebody. Right? Like, meaning, like, you're going to hit the guy with it. So not only is it getting a creep, but it's also hitting the guy. So you're getting, like, double effect out of it. Like, how are you going to secure range creeps? These are questions you need to ask yourself going into lane. How am I going to secure range creeps? How am I going to secure CS? Like, how am I going to win trades? I don't care if you're in melee form for 6 armor. Are you winning trades in melee form against Wind Ranger? No. No, because in melee form, you ain't fucking hitting Wind Ranger. So, that, that's not going to win trades. So, if you're looking at this lane and you go, I'm going to take a lot of damage. Okay. Is my method of mitigating that to fight back or is it by drawing like creep aggroing away from them as much as possible and using nukes to secure cs and what's answer is it in this case uh, the second one, second one. like, uh, like aggro. using a bunch and of aggro the... defensively is the answer here like sometimes it's being aggressive yeah. sometimes it's being defensive like in this case you, you can't just trade with them so taking the ability that helps you trade is not correct so i'd actually say your lane's almost like like, if, against better players, your lane would be much harder here, just because of that one decision. Like, you can lose lanes based on level one decisions, and that's why you'll hear, like, yeah. like players, like, pro players, like, bitching about a player leveling the wrong skill or executing the lane improperly at level one. I'd say they've gotten at least two or three denies that they shouldn't have gotten. So now you're, you're, now you're trading a lot. I don't hate this maneuver, but you are missing creeps while this is going on. So we're going to rewind going into that maneuver, and I'm going to talk about why I don't like it that much. So we all have obligations, right? Yeah. So right now, you just zoned that Wind Ranger, right? Like, you actually pushed her away. This is good? Yes. Look at the creep wave right now. What's going to happen in the next 5 or 10 seconds? Uh, that... Uh... One creep, which is low, is going to end. What about this one? Range creep will also get... Uh, eventually, it will die off in the next time. Okay. So, while you're chasing, how many creeps of your own are dying? Two. Uh, sorry, mine? Yeah, your creeps. Uh, only one, maybe. Maybe one. It's actually going to be zero, by the way. Maybe one, though. Yeah. While you're yeah. chasing, two of theirs are guaranteed to die, and once those two die, if you're not back, these two are going to die too. 
right? That's how creep equilibrium works. Like as more creeps die, it's going to keep killing more creeps. So my point is you zoned her. If this was the opposite, meaning like, you know, the situation that you're seeing here is their melee creep on your range and everything. Should you keep chasing? Yeah. Yeah. But I actually think you're getting a kill here and you're losing like so much. I, I I agree with that. Uh, I have saw the previous replays and your coaching sessions, which I saw, uh, saw you told that thing before. Okay. However, uh, in this patch, there were just two questions which I had. In okay. this patch, should I be focusing kills or should I be focusing on creeps? Just okay. Because, uh, so my question is, now. if you don't kill these guys, are you going to be able to be hitting creeps? Yes. Okay. Then you prioritize creeps. The priority is always creeps. The only time you go for kills is because you can't kill creeps if you can't kill them. Like, if they're alive, you're not killing creeps. So, you need to kill them. To kill creeps. It's literally, what does it take for me to kill creeps? Oh, I can kill creeps. I'm gonna go do this, and then go kill creeps. So, you, like, zoning them aggressively was fine. And then, go kill creeps. (laughs) You see what I'm saying? Like, if... You zoning them aggressively is not enough, and you actually need to kill them in order for you to get creeps. Then go kill them. Like that's the only like that's how you do it, right? Like my point is, after you get these kills, you're out of mana with no mana regen. He's respawning, and the lane's just pushing into their tower. That doesn't look better than it did when you started this engagement. So, like the way I look at it every time is, if you can't do this because you're not like you, you haven't had this practice yet if you can't do this ahead of time like i'm telling you now because i know this is how it's going to look see what happens here like do this engagement like if you're saying should i go for kills or not do this engagement and then like in hindsight watch the replay back and see what the lane looked like before you did the engagement and what it looked like after and then try to identify at some point it's not like you shouldn't do any of it that's it's never that black and white it's literally like at what point in this engagement should i have stopped like that's how you Ask yourself. And at this point, I even think it's reasonable that you killed this shaker because you have this and you can walk back and get these creeps. It's like not, I still don't think it's correct, but I think it's reasonable that you've gone this far. Like, and you go back and now kill these. You see what I'm saying? Like right now you kill that guy. See how in the mid game I said you kill the guy and you immediately make that decision, right? Well, if you kill that guy, shouldn't you just immediately do this? Whoop. Oh, and then you turn around like you can check it real quick, right? Because you know, that's what's relevant to you is these creeps. Like after you got to kill bottom here on Monkey King, what's relevant to you is what's going on on the map. So you can look at this lane and see, oh, Necro was pushing bottom. You look at this lane and say, no, nobody's there. You look and see two of your teammates top. Oh, I'm not going to do anything there. Or like, or I see the morphling wanting for this bounty rune and it's 1452. Teepee. It's like you get this kill. What's the only thing that's relevant to you on the map right now? this yes so you immediately check that right like you immediately see that and then you go then you can continue doing whatever you're doing like or or right. not continue doing whatever you're doing right? and if this was a first blood should I have gone for it what if this would have been a first blood should I have gone for it uh, i will never team? have that decision be made by first blood like that's just overthinking it it just doesn't matter like that hundred gold or whatever that you get for first blood like should never dictate whether or not you go for the kill or not like it just doesn't change the land to get a hundred gold. So I see all the decisions I told you to think about is is what changes. So I'm gonna fast forward real quick and then we're gonna call it. Yes. Um. If you what was your other question about the lane? Did you have another one? Like in general? Yeah. Uh. Basically, in this uh, scenario, there are two melee heroes, and the mix just sits in lane and soaks XP without harassing the enemy. So I went to farm in the jungle. So was that's the main thing which I wanted to see. Okay, so you can just tell me whether that decision making was correct or not. Okay, so at this stage right here, do you feel comfortable walking up to them? No. What should your Nyx do right now? Pull. Okay, so you should say to him, hey man, I need to pull. So this is a sad reality and I need to have better discipline about this myself. So you know as a core what you need right now, right? You need him to go pull? Yeah. Can you lane like this? Answer's no, right? Look at your mana no. health. Look at their mana health. You can't lane like this. So what do you have to go do right now? 
I pulled myself. Yeah, you have to walk over and pull. Like, it's not perfect. But the point is, you're in a bracket, and I, this is the hardest thing to remind yourself. You're in a bracket where nobody's playing perfectly. So if somebody else is doing the wrong thing and you have to be inefficient to make up for it, to help yourself, what I mean by that is like, if you don't do this, you're literally fucked, right? Like, you're just, if there's no pull going on, what do you do? Like, just sit here and soak, right? Like, I, my point is you know, looking at this land equilibrium and situation, you need to pull. So you need, and you know, it should be your Knicks. And if your Knicks doesn't do it, you're fucked anyway. So you should just walk over and do it, right? Yeah. In some circumstances, it's better just accept the inefficiency that your Knicks isn't pulling and just continue laning. But in this case, it's obviously not the correct play. Like, you're not benefiting from this lane being out here. Eat the one bad creep wave, meaning, like, you gave up one creep wave of farm to reset the lane by doing this. And by giving up one creep wave of farm, you're also getting a small camp. So it's not even like you lost a ton, right? And then you're resetting right. the lane equilibrium, right? Like, you're just resetting it to here. That's all you're going to do. You're just resetting it. And instead, now you're just... Like, my point that I've had a hard time disciplining myself to do is... Except a minor loss in order to put the lane back where you want it rather than continuously accepting the lane being in a bad place, right? Like, like you don't want to be here, and you're just going to die. Like, that's not a shocker at all. Like, we both knew it. Like, like you obviously played the game, but that lane situation looked, looked garbage. So, like, now you're fine. Like, it, th this is what the lane... Now the lane looks like this, and you're okay. But the point is, how much of that could have been predicted by me when you went for that kill, level one or two or whatever, didn't I tell you you were going to be in a worse spot yeah. after the kill than before? It? Like, that's me telling yeah. you you can predict this shit, like, while it's happening. Because you look at that and be like, so if you got that kill level one, you can watch the game back and be like, what happens for the next two minutes? Oh, we needed a pull. Otherwise, like, the lane's just shit. So then you ask yourself, you know, with the supports I have, are they going to pull? If I have to go pull myself, was that kill worth it? All these types of questions, okay? Like, all these questions. Like, it's so much that goes into that one kill that you can be improved. Like, there's multiple things you can think about that improve that kill decision. Um, okay. So, going to wrap it up about right here. Any last questions before? I'll, I'll see if there's any last things. But any, anything to wrap it up, man? Um, any general, uh, do you have any general suggestions for this patch? Um, um which all heroes I like the recent patch which came in, uh, the C patch. Yeah, uh, the C uh, patch. SP, I think Slark's yeah, still good. I think in general, you want to pick heroes that come online pretty hard between like 10 and 15 minutes this, this patch. I feel like the game speeds up really fast. Um, I think... I honestly think, like, Void's pretty good. I think Jug's pretty good. I think, like, Luna's pretty good. I think um, even, like, a hero like uh, Drow can potentially be pretty good. My point is, though, the game's going to start being active around 10 to 15 minutes, okay? So I, see. I don't like heroes like PL or Terrorblade anymore. Like, they just take longer than 10 or 15 minutes to actually be in the game. So I think my biggest recommendation as a carry or mid hero is that maybe you can be a hero that doesn't come online early enough. But you better not have another one on your team. Like, you better not have an anti-mage carry and All you right. pick Deusa mid or some shit. Like, the point is, this patch is very fast. So, maximum one hero on your team is allowed to hit creeps by themselves at 15 minutes in the game. It just... Otherwise, everyone's feeding. Like, that's how fast so this patch ramps up. Go ahead. So, generally, I should be playing heroes which come get online fast. Yeah, because if you are the anti-mage in this scenario, I think you are 100% relying on your team to do the right thing. If you're the guy being active and, like, taking part on the map, all the 4K players can go hit some creeps, man. Like, they can all figure that shit out. Like, let them go hit creeps, okay? Like, no, none of them are going to be active and create space for you properly in, on, a, like, on a consistent basis, right? You, they're not going to reliably do that. So, you know, pick as late in the draft as you possibly can. Like, you know, if you have to pick early... Then pick heroes that, you know, uh, kind of do their job regardless. Like, don't pick Snowball. Like, don't pick uh, heroes that rely on, like, a perfect matchup or anything like that. Um, I see. And then I'd say, like, the safest carry picks are, like, uh, like probably Slark, Naga. I think is a pretty safe hero. I think, uh, like, honestly, Jug's a pretty safe hero right now. Um, I think uh, overall, like, I, PA is probably pretty decent, but I actually haven't gotten the chance to play PA. 
Um, the point is, though, like, itemize, think about the game in terms of I need to be online 10 or 15 minutes into this game. So right. if I buy a Battle Fury on PA, that's okay as long as I can, like, as long as I can potentially still have impact at the 10 or 15 minute mark if I need to. Like, if my team's fighting, I can still show up. Um, right. So, like, the only exception to this was, like, yesterday I built Midas on Peel, and, like, I looked at the enemy lineup, and they literally had Ember Spirit, uh, Elder Titan, and, like, one other hero that just shits on me. And I'm like, I'm not going to be able to fight till 30 minutes anyways. Like, that was my idea. And I thought that was fine because the rest of my team was fighting them. And the point is, only one hero on your team is allowed to not be able to fight. And even then, ideally, you should try to be able to fight. Um, and that's why everyone's building, like, three Wraith Bands. I think, like, when I watch Arteezy in all my games, like, I've had Arteezy in, like, three of my games now. Like, whenever yeah. he played Troll, his itemization was, like, four Wraith Bands and a Vlad's. Like, that, that was his... Like, I'm not saying you necessarily have to buy four Wraith Bands. But, like, his intention was to to fight right like at as soon as possible he built four wraith bands out of vlads and then walked around the map fighting people like that's pretty much what ends up happening so um just think that way as a carry because this patch is super fast all the games i've watched in these qualifiers thus far have ended at like like most of them have ended somewhere around like 20 25 minutes like they're just over so um play accordingly or you know a plan accordingly with your items so that's all i got for you man uh all right Thanks for signing up. The session will be on YouTube. And just, uh, I, I gave you a ton of information one at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself. Like it's, it's a process, right? So if you're looking to go pro eventually, like if that's your goal, like all this stuff needs to keep getting better. Like don't, don't, um, don't be content with your knowledge level of any of this stuff. All the decisions I've told you, you'll learn things as you go, as long as you realize to think about these things. And eventually, if you think about them enough, you don't actually think about them. They, your thought process kind of just plays itself out. Like you don't, you know, every time I get a kill, my yeah. mind instinctually thinks all of the things I told you to think, right? Like I don't have to actually worry about that. It just happens. So, um, yeah, man, uh, I'll be making sure it's on YouTube and I'll be seeing you later, dude. Yeah. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you for extending this. All good, man. See ya. Okay. Uh, here's the. Four uh, K. Uh, Monkey King slash laning troll. Okay. End session one. Okay, so I'm assuming the second person is here. I'm not gonna go out of my way to to thank subs right now, guys. I appreciate the subs. Like I I, I do. I just want to make sure we get. I'm 